Besides the blog that you authored, how to optimize your location pages for SEO. What actually piqued my interest is it mentions a plumbing company. My family owns a plumbing company here in Portland, Power Plumbing, a little shout out there. And I was wondering if you could walk us through what local SEO is, why you gotta do it, what it means. Yeah, getting right into local SEO. Um, local SEO really just helps your local business stand out and helps drive more local traffic. So. I think really the best first step is to create a Google My Business listing for your local business. That is really like the number one thing that businesses can do in order to, you know, help drive more local traffic and really be found in the search engines. Like if I just go and do this, is there any way I can screw it up or is it super straightforward? It's inputting a form, it's where your address, what you do, your hours. Exactly. Yeah. It's very user friendly. Um, you just go to the Google My Business website, fill out all of your business information and for Google to really know that you're a business with an actual address, they send you a postcard to verify your location. That postcard basically has a code on it that you would input into the Google My Business dashboard, you know, verify that it's an actual um, local business and not a made up address or anything like that. Okay, so what next? I've got my Google My Business, I'm on there, everything's fine. What about my website? What about local SEO keywords? What's the next step? Yeah, so say you're a plumbing company in Portland, you know, you probably want to target keywords that are, you know, localized around the Portland area for your site as a whole. In regards to specific locations, if you're trying to target users in Beaverton or, you know, some other suburbs within the Portland area, you would want to build out location pages for those um, in order to get the correct traffic. That could be a lot. You know, Chicago is way bigger than Portland, but here, you know, there'd be Beaverton, Tualatin, Clackamas, Vancouver, and you want to go to your website. So I'm going to go to my family's plumbing company, www.powerplumbingco.com. I think I have it pulled up too. They've got their Monday through Friday, 735 30. They've got their phone number, contact, like where would a location page, it should be a tab up at the top here at the bar that says location. You could create like a menu um, tab within the navigation, either labeled service area or locations. Um, and then you could create subcategories under those for each individual location that you want to target. So there's also another thing, they don't like duplicate content, right? Correct, yeah. Am I taking the same thing and rewording it? Like, you know, we're a remodel, we do remodel work, we do residential work, power plumbing, we service Southwest Portland. And when I go to Tualatin, do I, say that same thing in a different way or do I cover different parts of my service? Exactly, yeah. So it's really important to diversify your content so that it's not duplicate. So even though it is the same plumbing service overall um, and the same broad level subject, we, we just wanna make sure that we're diversifying our content properly so that it isn't duplicate. We wanna target different keywords though. We don't wanna always say, you know, plumbing company, company Portland, plumbing company Beaverton, plumbing company Clackamas, whatever the town may be that can, you know, be an overkill. So we want to make sure that we're using different keyword variations um, that ultimately mean the same thing. Still want to stay broad with what the business is. So maybe like plumbing contractor, plumbing services, plumbing company, professional plumbing near me, um, something along the lines of that. Again, different variations that ultimately mean the same thing, but still mean the, the same broad service. So you mentioned keywords, which it's all keywords all the time, um, particularly with, with organic rankings. Where do you start? You know, I've heard keyword research. I've Googled it before. What is it? Where do I start? How do you do it? And how do you leverage it? Yeah. So keyword research is the process of finding terms that people are searching for. Um, in my opinion, it's really the bread and butter to SEO and your starting point. You know, it helps us answer questions like what are people searching for and how are they searching for it? In terms of keyword research, it's really important to determine what our client's business goals are and what they're looking to rank for. You know, a lot of times if a company wants to rank for plumbing, it's a little bit too competitive, probably really difficult to rank, high search volume. So we have to come up with a keyword that's longer tailed to really help drive more local specific traffic. Um, so maybe something like professional plumbing services or professional plumbing company, something like that that's a little bit more longer tailed um, to get the right traffic. Like how do, how do you do that? Where is this research? Is it just typing things into a search engine to see how many hits you get or the suggested tab on Google? Yeah, so we use multiple tools over on the SEO team. Um, we use SEMrush to look at our clients' existing rankings as well as find new keyword research terms. We also use Google Ads Keyword Planner 
Um, those are like our top two tools that we use. Would you be able to walk me through right now quickly, like powerplumbingco.com? Okay, so I'm in SEM Rush under organic research. Um, so what I'm going to do is paste um, powerplumbingco.com's domain in here and hit search. And it's going to populate a dashboard. So this is telling me that Power Plumbing Co. is ranking for 47 keywords across the site as a whole. Um, if I want to look specifically at the homepage's keywords or maybe a specific service page's keyword rankings, I can do that by going to pages. But to look at overall keyword rankings, um, I can just go to positions right here. And it's going to show me all 47 keywords that Power Plumbing Co. is ranking for. So a lot of times the top anywhere from one to five positions are usually branded naturally because when you type in the company name or the business name, a lot of times they're in the first position. So it's gonna show us the keyword, the position. Traffic percentage usually isn't very relevant. It's just an estimate. You'd wanna to go to Google Analytics for any sort of traffic information. The search volume, so this is again on a national level. Keyword difficulty, cost per click, and then the URL it's ranking on. Um, so again, these 47 keywords are the keywords that the site's ranking on as a whole, a lot of them probably are in the homepage because usually that is the page that gets the most traffic. Yep, negative 21%. What does that mean over there by the keywords? Does that mean we're behind industry standards or power plumbing's behind? Kind of meant that it's fell 21%. Um, if I go back to overview, it's telling this little chart right here is telling me that back in June we were ranking for 73 keywords, and as of August, we're now ranking for 47. So that dipped. I highly doubt power plumbing did anything. Is there, if you don't do anything, does that mean other people are competing you out? Exactly. Yeah. So that's why it's really important to incorporate those, those keywords within the content to maintain those rankings and hopefully see upward movement. So how do you maintain them? You know, they've got their homepage. Let me look at it. So I'm going to go to pages and then the homepage yeah. out of those 47 are ranking for 36. So I'm going to click on the number 36, and these are the 36 keywords out of the 47 that are on the homepage. Does it mean that you need to update content on your homepage regularly or else Google will get tired of it and prioritize somebody else? Not regularly. You know, it's important to incorporate the keywords that you are ranking for, if any. In this case, probably commercial plumbing Portland is something that whoever owns it would want to maintain. So incorporating that in the, into the content, you know, would hopefully push that up from position 11 to, you know, ideally the first page. But... It is important to check it regularly to see the increase in keywords and the different variations that Google will, you know, index. Because as you can see, commercial plumbers, Portland, Oregon, commercial plumbing, Portland, those are basically the same thing, just different ways that people search. Does that make sense? Yeah. So on the homepage, though, they have commercial plumbing and then a bunch of bullet points. Is that what's getting them in position 11 or should they be doing more than that? Depending on how much content is on the site already we we want to incorporate the keyword naturally and not in a spammy fashion so we want to incorporate that anywhere from two to three times on the home page to help with readability and um you know help google index that properly i went and did command f and they have the word commercial eight times mm -hmm. two of them are down here from reviews a couple are in these bullet points is that too many times just the word commercial no however if it was commercial plumbing portland five, 10 times, that could be excessive. Okay, got it. If you're doing an audit with power plumbing, um, you know, if I got my dad on the phone or my mom who's ever running this, mm -hmm. what would you say? Ranking for 47 keywords. They fell 30 since June, so that's not very good. Are they ripe for some local SEO? Do they need an SEO consulting? What is like the first thing you would tell them to do? Yeah, I would absolutely recommend, you know, an SEO consulting package to start to kind of get a little bit of a taste of SEO. And then from there, you know, budget lots and things like that, then they could determine what kind of um, local SEO campaign is right for them. That would be on the account manager um, to determine what level campaign is best for, for them. When we say campaign, are we talking about like a blog strategy? Or are you talking about SEO like on site, like on the website, optimizing it, all that sort of stuff? Or is it both? Yeah, so our SEO campaigns incorporate... All of the above, on-site SEO, off-site SEO, as well as, you know, blog strategy. That's kind of the beauty of our SEO campaigns is that it covers both. So our on-site SEO covers, you know, just your regular on-page optimization, whether that's service pages, product pages, um, depending on if it's an e-commerce or service-based client. The off-site really incorporates that backlinking um, component, which you don't get with traditional SEO consulting. That seems like it would be a little 
aggressive for a local plumbing company to be doing offsite SEO, or am I wrong? Would, would that ever be a situation they'd want to do that? I think backlinking is still an important component of SEO, but like you said, it, 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 it can be a little bit aggressive for you know smaller local businesses. Now, how would I find out who's the king fish, you know, as, as far as Google's concerned, Who's the biggest competition for something like power plumbing? You could type in plumbing Portland, plumbing company Portland. Google's smart enough to kind of pick up all those different keyword variations. And a lot of times, if somebody's ranking for plumbing Portland, they're probably also ranking for plumbing company Portland. So yes, the first page results are usually the top dogs. So DNF plumbing is in the first position. Uh, can we put that into SEM Rush? Of course. Yeah, let me go and find it. DNF plumbing. So yes, these guys are ranking as a whole for about 1,200 keywords. Damn! <laughs> They've remained pretty pretty stagnant over the past few months. But yeah, if you want to take a look at their homepage rankings, let's, let's take a look at those. Again, I'm going to go to pages and then my homepage. So out of all of these, they're ranking for 106 on the homepage. Again, a lot of branded terms, you know, whether people are spelling that with the ampersand or spelled out. So yes, Plumber Portland, Oregon says they're in third position. Um, they actually were in first, but they have dipped two in the past. Actually, SEM Rush re-indexed that on August 30th, so just two days ago. So it looks like they're probably doing digital marketing right. Like when I go to their website, first off, they've got a gate up, um, save fifty dollars today, name, phone number. So if I join their email list, which they probably have some email marketing tied in to bring things full circle. On their site, they have emergency plumbing at the top, which that's probably pretty smart. You don't need plumbing until you need it. So they also have Portland and they have a Vancouver phone number for Clark County, which is just in Washington, but just over the Columbia River. It's actually funny. So I am looking at this DNF. They don't have any sort of variation of plumbing Oregon or plumber Oregon anywhere on their content on their homepage, but they could have a high domain rating which could just mean that, you know, Google's naturally indexing them as the first position because they must be very reputable. So I've done this keyword research, Plumbers Portland, or I find some long tail keywords. What do I do with them? I know there's title tags, H1 tags, meta tags, there's the body, but what are some rules of thumb that I can actually do to my website or power plumbing for that matter that actually move the needle slightly? Exactly. Yeah. So we want to find kind of that golden primary keyword for each page. So we want to find one primary keyword um, for each page and incorporate that consistently throughout the title tag, like you said, description, H1, and throughout the content naturally. Generally two to three times within the content is sufficient, but you know, depending on if it is a, say a thousand words of existing content, then we can probably work with incorporating that keyword, you know, say four to five times. As long as it flows and reads naturally to both the user and search engine, that's what we, we care about. We do have restrictions on titles and descriptions to ensure that, you know, our title and description doesn't get truncated in the search engine. So if you ever see that those three dots or those ellipses in the SERPs or the search engine results page, that means that the title is too long and Google has truncated that with the, the ellipses or the three dots. So we do have our recommendations with character counts. Um, and our suggested word counts for different types of pages, whether that's an e-commerce page or a service page, we do have just our internal suggested word counts for those. So for somebody like Power Plumbing, would they want to look at their business? Like they have two different sides. They have residential, which is smaller, and then they have commercial projects, which is like Nike and Intel and big buildings. I doubt any of that business is coming from engines because they have those relationships because they've been in business for 45 years what would they do to help improve their rankings overall like is there an example of a keyword or long tail keyword that they would want to go after I, I would have to do the research behind that my best guess right offhand would be something like commercial plumbers portland since they are already ranking for that so making sure we're maintaining that and hopefully seeing up, upward movement there um, but also incorporating new keyword variations to help see an increase in rankings for those keywords. So you've got a business, you create a Google My Business page, you break out location pages, you research keywords, you implement them into your titles and your body. You don't want to repeat content across your location pages. Is that it? Basically, yeah. We you know, really identify the business's goals and their wants and needs before we even get started in keyword research, just to make sure that, you know, both 
us and them are on on kind of the same page. So we send out a PRQ a project requirement questionnaire, you know, that covers, you know, where the client service area is, what their needs are, what their wants are, their goals, things like that. And we take all of that information into account before we get started on the project and you know, do our research accordingly. Like I said, some companies just don't understand SEO and want to rank for, you know, plumbing. That's that's not always attainable. So that's why we kind of have to take that word plumbing and find a long tailed keyword around it to to satisfy both their needs and you know see attainable results ideally for SEO purposes. Jennifer, thank you so much for walking us through SEO the keywords and, and localizing your pages. Um, is there anything you'd like to say in closing before we let you go? Of course, yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, and anytime you guys need help with SEO, local, national, anything you need, um, feel free to reach out. Check it out.